For me, it was more when I'd go for walks, lunch times, when I was actually in the office, is initially when I knew, well, others would notice. Not necessarily I'd notice. Is this pre-pandemic? Yes, so okay. pre-pandemic that people would, when I'd go like walk lunch time, if you'd go with like colleagues, they were like, you sound out of breath. For me, I think the first thing when I joined, I hadn't realised actually how much body fat I had. Mm. Okay, so the first thing was that, because um, I'm not somebody who necessarily will control what I eat, or I, I find that quite difficult, but when I saw my percentage body fat, uh, yeah, it was a shock to the system, okay. because I didn't really know what that meant. Mm. Welcome to Real People, Real Results, Real Change, the podcast that's dedicated to helping real people develop real health and fitness in their lives. Real people like you, business owners, professionals, house husbands and housewives, and students. I'm Stefan, I'm a personal wellness coach at UFIT Studio, and I'll be your host. This episode, I'm talking again with Niv Tejpal, head of R&D for an energy consultancy. Niv has always strived to succeed personally and professionally, and is on a journey to develop a better relationship with mind, body and soul. In this episode, we talk about how slim does not always mean fit or healthy, and the benefits of exercise and strength training for slimmer women. Okay, Niv, um, it's so great to have you back. Um, And I'm really excited to talk to you today about something that is perhaps not so... Um, it's known, right, but it's not so um, so out there and it catches a lot of people out, which is where you're, you know, for all intents and purposes, you know, uh, on the scales, looking in the mirror, um, what you see is a slim person, but not necessarily a healthy person. So where, where, where did this realisation sort of start to kick in for yourself that actually your health, even though you're slim, your health wasn't necessarily where you'd want it to be? Well, um, for me, it was more when I'd go for walks, lunch times, when I was actually in the office, mm. is initially when I knew, well, others would notice. Not necessarily I'd notice. Is this pre-pandemic? Yes, so okay. pre-pandemic that people would, when I'd go, like, walk lunch time, if you'd go with, like, colleagues, they were like, you sound out of breath. Mm. You know, and that was only if you'd go across the road for half an hour or whatever it was, they were right. like, you sound out of breath. Mm. Um Again, didn't think anything of it because I was like, I'm slim, you know, I'm a vegetarian. Mm. I I think I eat okay. I do snack a lot and eat, Mm. you know, rubbish Mm. foods. But, you know, I don't think I'm that bad. I'm not obese. So, um, and then when the pandemic hit, I just obviously was constantly at my desk. Mm. Wasn't really moving a lot. um, Only Mm. doing... 200 steps a day 200 steps. Yeah, it was literally like that was uh, I was like oh great did more than me more than yesterday but you know in yes. reality you were stuck at your desk you yes. couldn't really do a lot and especially during I think when it was the colder months it was much harder to actually get yourself to go out um yes. but I hadn't realized so I I just felt even though I was slim, I started to feel heavy. Mm. So if you look at me, you think, oh, she's slim, mm. you know, probably goes to the gym. Mm. Um, but I just did not feel right. I was just getting out of breath. Um, I just didn't feel right in myself. So that's when I realised that actually I do need to do something about it. Because even yeah. before, like I said, even when I was slightly out of breath, I didn't think anything of it. Mm. It was just when I start, when you feel, I know it sounds a bit weird, but when you feel heavy, even though you're slim, mm-hmm. um, that's when I realised. Yeah, yeah, almost like maybe like a lack of energy or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. But, but tangible, you could feel yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, so so what, was the, what was your first sort of step then? Uh, presumably this was, was this then post-pandemic? So, yes. So then I started looking at gyms. I yeah. thought, I need to do it you know, join a gym mm. again. So um, I was Googling a lot and looked at some of the um, popular name gyms. Mm. So actually mm. had gone to see a couple, mm. um, but I just didn't feel right when I went there. So mm. I went for a tour of the place. I just didn't feel right there. The environment yeah. just wasn't right. And I thought, well, I don't want to pay 
money again to not to go. So, mm. yes, that's when I then, I was just looking and it was actually a friend of mine who goes to my current gym mm. um, who actually suggested it. Yeah. Can I ask, was it, was it tougher coming out of the lockdowns and stuff to do that? I don't know. Was it? Was, uh, was, was that just? No, kind of for me it was the same because I've never liked going to gym. So whether it was pre-pandemic yeah. or post, for yeah. me the the feeling was exactly the same. It's okay. not as if it was. It made it worse. I don't particularly enjoy looking for these things. Yeah. I'm somebody who almost yeah. wants somebody to do my homework for me. <laughs> you know, it's just. I was like, I don't like research and all the stuff. I'd rather somebody yeah. say, you know, this is a great place, and yeah, so. Mm. Yeah, it was the sense. same. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so so you found a gym uh, that you felt comfortable, mm -hmm. um, and in, which involves some personal training yes. and that side of it. So what's, what sort of things um, is, kind of did you start to sort of develop and, and, and do differently then? So for me, I think the first thing when I joined, I hadn't realised actually how much body fat I had. Mm. Okay, so the first thing was that because um, I'm not somebody who necessarily will control what I eat or whatever. I find that quite difficult. Yeah. But when I saw my percentage body fat, I, yeah, it was a shock to the system okay. because I didn't really know what that meant mm. until I was also shown pictures to where I wanted, what I wanted to look like. So I thought I would be a certain body fat, mm -hmm. thought that looks like my physique, except that I was a lot, I had a way more body fat. Okay. Um, which actually was, I th that was scary for me because mm. I was like, the implications to my health can't be good. Yeah. So, yeah, that's when I started obviously thinking I need to, you know, make this work now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, and how did you do that? So, by, by nature, not so keen on gyms, that whole sort of yeah. set up. Um, rather have someone do your homework at right? So go to the gym for you. <laughs> yeah, ideally. <laughs> so was that, was that tough to start? Um, I think because I... So I, I arranged more regular personal training sessions to make me go. So that I actually booked... I went on a, the better package so that actually... I was forced to go. I'd booked the times in. I had to go to these things. Yeah. And and until then, I was comfortable, like, mm -hmm. doing it, you know, going through how it worked. I think that's ultimately what made me do it. So yeah. knowing full well, I had to turn up at a certain point in time. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd be like, where are you? And almost be told off for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Which is cool. So actually, because because you, you'd said before, like you know, obviously you know you're you're a hard worker, yeah, right, and um, and don't like you know um, you know you're going to hit targets. You don't like yeah. letting people down, and yeah. and, and so um, you almost like treated it as as like booking a meeting or something. Yeah. So if it's in the diary, you're gonna you're gonna have yeah. to do it. Yeah. Um, so kind of leaning into yeah. your sort of natural mindset and yeah. way of, of of thinking. And also, I think what. You almost feel because you you have um, your coaches who you're accountable to. Uh -huh. I didn't want to let any of them down. I know it sounds it's like oh I've got to be weighed this week. It's like oh my god, I need to stop <laughs> eating all the sweets. Uh, you know, so there were things mm -hmm. like that that I never really thought about accountability. And mm -hmm. I'm like oh you know mindfulness accountability. All mm -hmm. those kind of things don't work for me. But actually now having to you know, answer to somebody. Yeah. It's like working, you know, it's, yeah. it's the same approach. You you know, you get paid for doing a job. Yep. Likewise, it's I had to do certain things because I had to report into somebody and it was like, oh God, I have to, I have <laughs> to do it. So yeah, I mean, that helped as well because times where you didn't go in, say they were like, where are you? We haven't seen you this week, you know? So yeah. you're just like, oh no, I better go. So yeah, that also helped as well. And like I said, if the environment wasn't right, I would, I wouldn't want to go at all. Mm. So it's a combination of lots of things that actually makes me go. Okay, cool, cool. And and then um, I know, like, it, you said before about, like, it's important to you to be, like, for example, injury-free mm. and to do, you know, um, do things uh, with good form yeah. and all the rest of it. And so what? What? Uh, how, how steep of a learning curve has that, that been for you? Or how, um, how tricky is that? <laughs> It was, um, so I remember the first, was it wasn't my first session. Um, I thought I was doing, I've done some kind of, I think it was just the warm up, <laughs> actually, that I knew what I was doing. They were like, I'll do this. 
and my form was completely wrong. So okay. I think I'd actually learnt that from when I was trying to do some workout videos at home during the pandemic. Right. Completely, obviously we were taught one thing, um, yeah, completely wrong. So I was like, oh my God. <laughs> but now I'm actually completely focused. I ask the questions to where my arm needs to be, how far I need to be standing, you know, everything. Yeah. So I know, so when I come to do it next time, uh -huh. I know what I should be doing. But yeah, it was definitely a learning steep learning curve for me and you appreciate the value that somebody brings and that's like I said before that's what you pay for you pay for somebody's expertise to make sure that you are injury free you're doing something properly and you're working the right muscle mm. groups that mm. you need to work yeah 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 and then how how's that developed over time like have you have you found your love for that or or is it is it still a challenge but you you've kind of lined up the right things to enable you to do that yeah, so I ask the right questions to actually get my form right, but I do, for me, it's still quite certain things, I, certain exercises I don't like doing because I just find them... What do you not like doing? Um, it's the... Is it called shelk, I think? Shelk? Oh, yeah, it could be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, where you ha it's for your hamstrings and you do it with the ball on one leg. I struggle with that so much. <laughs> uh, that kills after about three. Um, so, yeah, that, that, you know, trying to get your, make sure you're doing everything mm. right. And, yeah, it, it's, for me, that's, it's a real education. But it's like with anything you do, you have to learn to actually, you know, know what you're doing to produce the best results. Yeah. So. Okay. So aside from that accountability, like, what, what, what drives you forward and keeps you going? Like, what's, what's important to you about, about your health and fitness? Um... I suppose it's physically I want to be the best I can, you know, the best I can be, but mm. mentally as well. You know, for mm. me, I think as you get older, like I'm in my 40s, so I want to make sure that, you know, my health stays the best mm. it can stay because you just don't realise that you think, oh, I'll stay youthful forever. Like, <laughs> and then you suddenly hit your 40s and you're just like, oh, my God. Like, you just suddenly start to slow down a lot mm. and you realise, actually, I need to do things to keep me going as long as possible. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's what motivates me most to make sure that I'm at the best I can be mm. um, for as long as possible. Mm. And where, where do you, how do you feel, like, in terms of, like, your sort of physical fitness at the moment? Like, how does that compare to sort of how you've been and other points in your life? Um, I would say I'm probably at the best point I've ever been I have to say even when I had a personal trainer before I would say I'm much better now because I think I understand things a bit better because you're almost taught to learn things yourself as well because it's not just all personal training you know mm -hmm. you have to do on certain days you have to do things yourself so you have to learn <laughs> you know whereas I think when you're with a a PT they always correct everything for you if you're not mm. doing it whereas I think when you there's a bit of both mm. that you do genuinely have to observe listen yeah take that into account and then do it yourself and yeah, yeah. you know and it just helps you going forwards so yeah. yeah yeah so there is a value in in taking ownership yeah over your training program yeah. and, and and training by yourself yeah. as well yeah. yeah yeah amazing okay um all right so um any, any top tips for people listening? Like, if you could, you know, rewind the clock and know some of the things that you know now and, and sort of take them back with you, what, what are some of those things you, you wish that younger you had <laughs> knew at the time? Um, I would definitely have started exercising sooner, hmm. for sure. I mean, I would also say that just being slim doesn't make you, you know, that doesn't mean that you... Don't have it won't have any issues going forwards with your health and that everything's okay or that even if you're a vegetarian you know you've got you eat that internally you're okay mm -hmm. it's so important to not only for your physical but your mental health mm -hmm. and actually not focusing as much as work's important and all these things are important in your life your career is important yeah. but don't forget the main thing and that's you would be my main takeaway so yeah if I would have started way many many years ago I think I'd be in a much better position you know so yeah that'd be my my uh, advice I think okay. start as soon as possible amazing okay thank you so much thank you. Yeah, it's been absolutely uh, wonderful listening to you talk and uh, really good advice thanks okay.